Hello everyone, um, I got a question about how I make my dolls, so I thought this would be a pretty interesting video to make right now, considering I'm kind of in the process of making one. Um, so, this is Maddie. <laughs> it doesn't look like Maddie right now, um, really. But, uh, I had originally made her, and I didn't really like it, so I'm remaking her, and, um, yeah, so, the first thing that I usually start out with is a wire skeleton, like this. Um, and make it out of this wire. Um, I just got this at a local hardware store. Not exactly sure what gauge it is, but the main thing to worry about when you're making something out of wire is that if you want it to have mobility, like you do with these joints, but you also don't want it to flop over once you put things on top of it, it has to be strong enough that you can bend it with your fingers, but it's gonna stay. Um, and it's not gonna have, like, that bounce back. Um, and so after this... Usually what I'll do is, I, I haven't done this for this one besides this area, but um, I can show you with this one that I haven't finished yet. Um, this is Mint Chip. <laughs> He's been sitting unfinished for like six months. Um, I will wrap the entire body in yarn that I'm not using, really, just like regular yarn. And that will become the, um, the shape of the body, and then you put the fabric over that. Um, it's really helpful because this way you can flush out the body shape that you want, um, with it also retaining the mobility, like, look at that, you know. Um, a major thing to watch out for, though, is if you're making a doll with feet that you want to make out of clay, like, this is polymer clay, but I honestly would, um, suggest using paper clay, um, only because this, this man is, is he's so hefty that, like, Every time I hold him like this, is like, bend over, because he's just so heavy, um, from this clay, because polymer clay is pretty heavy. Um, if you're going to be doing this, um, you would want to, for example, with Maddie, if you wanted to add feet, you're probably going to want to just make sure you have allowance at the end for a foot that you can put into the clay, because that's going to make it a lot more stable. Um, you can also add, um... Uh, foam pads to that like bent over piece of foot and that way it will um uh have more stability honestly um and another method you could definitely go about and this guy is super messy so um yeah he's kind of uh falling apart and dying i have to remake him <laughs> oops um this is my only ball jointed doll that i've made um he's kind of horrific right now um this is name his name is name um i did him entirely out of paper clay and he's probably about half the weight of this guy and he doesn't even have any fabric on him right now <laughs> which is why i haven't tackled him yet um and so uh he's actually strung together right now um but that's not usually what i'll do um but honestly, there's a lot of different methods, and this is the original Maddie. She's uh, definitely kind of crusty. Um, I did not use the correct wire for her, so if you if you look, I'll bend this, and it'll bend back. And like her body has like no mobility, because it just kind of... <laughs> and you can see the under, the underside of like the yarn underneath there, which is kind of an issue. So you want to really make sure that you know what you're going to be using for these things, because honestly, um, if you get to a point where you hate your materials, it's not going to turn out well. Um, and she is very heavy. She's made of polymer clay. This is before I got paper clay. Um, so she's really heavy. Um, she has no finger mobility at all, because I really wasn't thinking about it. Um, so it's just hands. Um, her body can't really bend. Her neck can't really bend. You know, honestly, not a very good doll. Um, but there's definitely an upgrade. This is my first doll. This is Casper. Um, I have since come back and uh, shortened his torso because his torso was really long. Um, and I made it so that I could remove his clothes. But honestly, like, the stitching's not very good because this is, like, my first doll. And um, he can bend... A little bit better than Maddie, but honestly not by much, because he's still, like, kind of crusty. Um, and he was 
used, he was made using the methods that I, um, just described to you, except his hair is a little bit, uh, literally so crusty, because I accidentally put way too much, um, product in his hair, and then put it under heat, oops, um, but speaking of hair, um, the method that I actually go about for hair is that, um, I will get yarn and brush it out and, um, flat iron it with a flat iron and, um, just keep brushing it out until it gets kind of like a hair texture and, um, then you're left with like these really, really nice pieces of hair that you can attach and usually what I'll do, um, is I, I glue straight to the head because these are just like one-time dolls. So I, I won't be, um, reusing them for anything. Um, I will start with the scalp. I'll come around the back all the way up. And then you do that a couple times and then you attack the bangs. And then you just go all the way around to the top. And eventually it'll look a little bit crusty up here probably. But you still have a nice head of hair. You can't even see, um, where I applied the hair. Like it's literally just hair, which is really nice. And then you can style it with a flat iron or something with heat and water. Um, I've gotten really good results with the method I just described, but you could probably find something else. Um, and so you guys have seen these, um, but this is actually a new doll that I had just finished. He's probably the biggest doll that I've ever made. Um, he is, uh, he's a little dragon and he's fully poseable. Um, the wire that I use inside of him is, uh, a lot stronger. I think it's just, like, um, armature wire. And, um, yeah. He's massive. His face is made of, um, ceramic clay, um, that I made in ceramics class. And then I super glued it to the wire inside of him. I just made this long tube of fabric. Um, and actually this darker... Um, fur right here is real mink fur that I just had left over from a, um, bag of mink fur that I had purchased from at their store for, like, a couple bucks. Um, I guess someone was making something and just never finished it. Um, so yeah, I made him, and he's probably my biggest doll project that I've ever worked on, as well as, um, probably the most successful doll project I've ever worked on. He's fully posable. Um, the wire stays. Um, for his legs, I only used, um, about just this piece of wire, right? So, like, um, I didn't bend it over itself or anything. It's just one piece of wire all the way up, um, wrapped around the middle piece of wire, which is about, like, four times thicker than this, um, but it's still bendy. Um, and then his feet are, um, really thin jewelry wire that I bent over the sides, you can see right there. Um, and put six beads on each, and, um, yeah, honestly, it turned out really good. It's really poseable. Um, you can move him, put him in any position. Um, even his wings have wire in them, so you can, um, fold his wings if you want. He doesn't have a name yet, so you guys can probably suggest a name, but, um, yeah. This is probably my most recent doll project that I've actually finished. I finished this in one day. Um... He is basically my Christmas present to myself. Um, but yeah, um, happy doll making.